All right, so here's your vase, and uh, I can see that you did some operations in direct modeling mode. Uh, it's not a good idea. And I also see that the vase is not located at the origin, and that's where I need it. So I'm going to use, uh, I, I will turn on the timeline, um, but I'm going to use the uh, move point to point move tool to move that vase to the origin. Oh, yeah, I need to select what I'm going to move, I guess. Components, bodies, and that one, that one. And that did away with my selection. That, that is brilliant. And okay, so now we have it located at the origin, and now I can actually turn on the timeline. Capture design history. Okay. Um, if you pay attention to the data panel, you can see that I've done this once already. So <clears throat> this is my vase. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch here. And I have all my, all the, the, the tools that I use most, I have those mapped to the S key menu. So there's a circle here. And because I've done this before, and now I want a diameter of 60.2 millimeters. Uh, millimeters. And something I will do immediately is I change the document settings from centimeters to millimeters. Okay. And if I don't forget it, I might explain later why I do that. So now we need a body, and I'll just extrude that over here and set that to a new body. And what I need that cylinder for, I'm going to um, emboss our pattern into that cylinder. But we'll get there. So what I'm also going to do, I'm going to set this body and change the opacity, uh, let's say to 50%, so I can still see the base underneath and know what I'm doing. So then uh, we had discussed already that importing the SVG didn't result in anything useful. Um, insert SVG and uh, let's just use the one that's in the data panel. Pick a plane and we can already see uh, all these neat little splines here in your SVG or not all of them but some of them just they go haywire. And I've tried to convert it using an online converter into a DXF that worked, but then the DXF was, instead of splines, was all polylines. So that wasn't useful. Either way, I, I abandoned that effort. Uh, also, that SVG in another 2D CAD application that I used also came out wrong. It didn't look quite like this, but it had also problems. So what I ended up doing is I created a, uh, a screen thread. And when you record video, opening files in Fusion 360 for whatever reason takes pretty long. So I, I recreated this pattern with the tools available in Fusion 360. Basically, I created a screenshot, inserted it as a canvas, and then I calibrated that canvas uh, to match the dimensions roughly of the circumference of the, uh, of the vase, which is you know, about 60 millimeters in diameter. So then I just simply created sketches for all the, the, the pattern elements. And then I created some extrusions, um, basically embossments, and patterned those as much as I could. So I didn't have to sketch that much. And basically ended up with this, uh, with this object. So we don't need that fillet, I only added that for rendering purposes and we don't need to see the sketches so this is our this is our um, our pattern so let me save that real quick and close it back down so what, what I'm going to do now I'm going to insert this pattern into this uh, document into this design
Um, I guess I need to save this first. Okay, there it is. I'm going to rotate it into the proper orientation. Then somewhat move it close to where I want it. Somewhere around here, maybe. That might be okay. Okay, but right now I can still drag it around. I get these icons of position capture, but I don't really uh, like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a joint somewhere maybe here and eh, I don't like that either. Nah, that works out okay. And actually make sure that it's in a fixed location so it can't just move around on us by accident. Okay, so now it's uh, fixed in position. I can't just drag it around. That's what I want. And uh, I'm going to break that link here. So it's actually now part of this design and not linked to the to the design here anymore. So I'm going to activate it and create a construction plane because the overall workflow is going to be that I'm going to emboss this pattern into this, into this cylinder. And we have an emboss tool in Fusion 360, but it basically only works with sketches. So I need to create a sketch. How do I do this? I create an offset plane from this surface here by 0.5 millimeters. Remember, I changed my document settings to millimeters. So if I, point, uh, if I type in 0.5, it'll automatically do that in millimeters. So now that construction plane intersects our pattern embossings all about halfway. Well, not about halfway, precisely halfway. And then I'm going to create a sketch on this and use the create project include intersect tool and the default uh, is specified entities. So, but if we do that and we can see how it previews what is being intersected or the result of the intersection, but that would be very tedious. So in this case, I changed that to body. I picked the body and you can already see how it shows us all the intersected curves. And then I say, okay, and finish the sketch. And then I don't need to see that body anymore. But I do need to see that sketch, but not those, only this one. So what I'll do then is I simply use the create emboss command and select all the sketch entities with a window selection and remove those that I don't actually want to emboss. And we also don't want those to stand out from the surface, but we want to basically deboss those into the surface. So now it asks me to select a face and I select the face of the cylinder. All right, and uh, I've done this before, so it uses the same value here, minus 10 millimeters. And the reason why I chose minus 10 millimeters is to make sure that the embossments into that cylinder here also intersect completely with the surface of the vase. So we accept that. And we're basically done with our pattern component and don't need that at the moment. So I'm also going to go and hide. When I hit the lid, I don't need that anyway. And I'll delete our base. So now I'm going to change into the surface workspace and delete those two cap surfaces, the, the cap and the bottom, so to speak. Hit the delete key and they're gone. And that changes this from a solid body into a surface body. So what I need that surface body for, I want to split the face of this vase with that surface body. And that should basically get us our 
pattern as split surfaces into the vase phase. So let's see if this works. Modify split phase, and I'm going to pick the surface of the vase, splitting tool, and I'm actually going to pick this in the browser so I know that I picked a complete body and not just one face. So that'll take a little while. The object I'm creating is not visible. Yeah, well, the reason for that is that I have the pattern tool, the pattern component selected. So I don't need that anymore anyway. So if we hide this, we can see that it split the face of the vase with by intersecting the the vase body or the vase face, the outer face with our tool. And what we can do now is we can use the press pull tool in the in the solid tab. But we can already see that this looks a little bit distorted, right? It looks stretched. And of course, the reason for that is that when we emboss it onto a cylinder, it remains its original shape, but because the surface is semi-conical, it's stretched. So what can we do about it? Uh, let me roll the timeline back and show that um, pattern again. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the scale tool and that'll help us to battle that to a degree. So I show the origin. And previously, the default is uniform, but I really want to only compress this object in, in one direction. So I pick the non-uniform, and it asks me to, you know, it assumes you already have a point selected. I don't want to scale it about that point. I deselect it and select my origin here. And then I use the Z scale, the Z axis here, um, and scale it by, let's say, 0.8. And that shrinks it down into just in that axis. And then if we activate our timeline again, our top level, let's see what that does. And it'll take a little while because it has to recalculate all the split operations. Okay, should be done by now. And we see that that helped. Um, the more you move this pattern towards here, the more compressed it becomes in the bottom, while it doesn't quite get that rate of compression at the top here. And that's just simply because the curvature here of that surface is variable, right? It curves much more here than it curves here. So that's a limitation that we'll have to live with for the moment. So then we're going to use the press pull tool. And the press pull tool is a meta command. It does things based on what you have selected. If you select an edge, it will put a radius there, a fillet. But if you select a face, it will put an offset there. And if you leave it at the default, which is automatic, it'll try to modify an original feature. Well, there isn't an original feature and we need to select new offset. And we select minus one. And say, okay. And we can already see that takes quite a while. Uh, it has to do with the fact that I'm also recording a video at the same time. Okay, now it's completed. So I'm not going to complete that uh, on video for the entire vase. Um, so here's the final result. And uh, you can now go into the render workspace. Just simply render it out. <laughs>